Welcome back to Grand Chess Store 2024. We are having the game which probably most of you wanted to see since like for maybe the last few weeks. It's Magnus Carlsen, the best chess player in the world against upcoming world championship challenger Gulkesh Damaraju. It's a rapid game. Gukesh starts with white piece and plays e4. Magnus responds with e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5. Right lever attack? No. Not really. But you know, if let's say uh, something happened along this line, knight g5, knight f7, right lever attack. Of course, Magnus is not that bad to play this. So he responds with the usual b5. This line is very rare because some people i mean most of the people play knight a5 d5 is like a more tricky move the idea of this move that after bishop b5 there is queen d5 counterattacking this bishop and this pawn on g2 so bishop c6 takes and the point is let's say castle bishop b7 and now this bishop with queen puts so much pressure on this diagonal that it's you know it kind of scary it looks scary because right now, let's say queen f3, compressor queen f3, then bishop c5, all this. So, of course, Kukish knows some theory. He plays bishop f1, which is the strongest move in position, and Magnus responds with knight d5. And now bishop b5, because queen is no longer on g5, it doesn't attack this bishop, so the pawn can be taken. So, bishop b7, d4. So far, Kukish plays the best moves in the position. Castle bishop e7, and now first mistake. According to computer, queen h5 gives white a huge advantage. I mean, right now Magnus has to choose between bishop g5 or g6. I mean, g6 just doesn't look great because queen h6 and you know, king can castle. So, uh, bishop g5 is another move which doesn't make a lot of sense to give up your bishop for this knight, your king is not castle, bishop g5 comes with a tempo, attacking this queen on g8 and then rook e1, and you know it looked very bad, but Kukesh plays knight f3 back, he's attacking this d4 pawn and now Magnus just castles, and it turns out after knight d4, bishop b7, alright, Kukesh is up a pawn, but Magnus has insane bishops, he has a pair bishop which is compensating the pawn, so Kukesh is playing knight e2 and cast uh, rook e8, c3, c5, knight f5, bishop f8, knight f3, queen f6, and look, the rook is coming to d8, knight potentially comes to f4, this bishop is opening up, you know, and it seems like, you know, Mike Magnus is taking the initiative, and it is really like that, because look, though Magnus sacrificed the pawn in the opening, now it, I mean, I would play this position with black against like any grandmaster. Because look, very active pieces. This bishop need to be needs to be developed. This rook is still on a1. This rook is already coming to g8. H6. So h6 is basically a move to let's say rook d8 is played. There is bishop g5. So Magnus just wants to uh, do a prophylaxis from bishop g5. He plays h6. Queen c2. Rook d8, rook d1, knight b6, takes, takes, knight e1, rook e8, attacking the knight on e1, bishop e3, you know, kind of putting pressure on c5. So Magnus plays knight c4, knight f1, and it looks like everything is protected, c4. Uh, now the point was knight c4, and there is uh, queen g5, and I mean, there is no queen c6, but queen g5, yeah, looks, looks great, you know. With a threatening, basically, let's do some nonsense move like this and BAM! So, Queen G5 has its, its very beautiful idea. Let's say Knight F3, Bishop C5, putting even more, more pressure on E3 Knight. Very tough to play for white pieces. So, Queen A4 attacking the spawn, and here the banger. BAM! F takes E3, Bishop C5, and now look. Even though Magnus is down in exchange, look at those bishops. And here, guys, here Gukesh played blunder, which probably could have costed him a game. But what we'll see in the video, I mean, 
it didn't as you probably already know so queen e8 is a move which uh, maintains equality in this position and now knight f3 because now this pawn is protected and let's say this 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 very simple rook e1 protecting everything and all black can do is just do a perpetual check queen g4 and maybe queen you know queen of five king of two kings two basically perpetual checks da 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 and queen c2 this would have made a draw but who cares plays knight f3 which is a blunder you know why this check and here the only move is king of one because after king h1 I'll give you a second to solve this. It's black to move and win. We don't play bishop f3, because bishop f3 actually loses due to queen a8 this, and queen can take the queen, uh, the bishop. So what happens after king h1 is skittish! And the problem is, g takes a free bishop f3, and even though, you know, there are rook, Queen, those bishops are a lot stronger. Imagine if the game would have ended like this. That would have been insane. But of course, Kukish sees it and plays king of one. Still bishop c6, queen d1, and according to computer, after simple bishop f4, which was played, Kukish should just resign. He doesn't have checks on d file. Uh, bishop d3 is coming. So, queen d7. And now, again, bishop d3 is winning this and queen b6 and it turns out that it's very hard to protect e2 you know there are even some ideas of bishop of 2 queen of 3 queen of 2 queen c2 you know it's just very tough let's say this this and the computer suggests is basically to play b3 which already is by the law but let's say queen of 7 and there is a simple queen b2 and there are no checks on this diagonal because this bishop is a monster it restricts king and it also controls the safety of king on h7. That's why it's so bad for white pieces. So queen d7 was played, but Magnus played king h7. Again, some prophylaxis. Though, again, it was not necessary. Because look, king will go to h7 at any given point. Like, yeah, Magnus was afraid. Maybe he didn't see bishop d3, queen b6, but I mean, it wins on the spot, you know? It's actually tough to see, you know, when you're in the game, you don't know what computer thinks of your position. But king h7 does seem like a useless move. Because, I mean, after some queen h check, king will still go. And as long as, you know, bishop is not uh, hanging on e3, I mean, you should be good, but Magnus still decided to go for a prophylaxis move. King e2, and now the point is... Bishop b3 is no longer possible because of this. Bishop b6 is played, but you know, still it looked like Magnus can still win. Because look, two bishops. But again, I mean, equal amount of pawns, but it doesn't seem, uh, you know, I mean, still. Queen up 4, queen f3 ideas. Queen g6, queen g2 ideas. A lot of stuff that's still threatening, but it's very hard to, you know, find out the best decision. Queen g6 is played. King d1, queen g2. And now again, let's say rook e4, there is queen f3 and, I mean, black are not risking anything, but probably a draw. Rook e4, queen f3, rook e2, this, e3, that's what basically happened in the game. Queen of one, this, 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 and basically uh, Magnus and Gukesh agreed to a draw. This is the first time since uh, Gukesh became a challenger, and, I mean, you know, Magnus could have won. And Magnus should have won this game, but again, a luck on the Gukesh side. Tomorrow, and as you're watching this video today, is the last day of Rapid. And we have a weekend of fun, weekend of Blitz, so let's see how it goes. So after the second day, Magnus and we are the leaders. Anish is, <laughs> Anish is last, Gukesh sixth. After the first, you know shaky day he managed to you know kind of come back with two wins and one draw so let's see what happens tomorrow and on the weekend i hope you enjoyed see you very soon bye bye